Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, I wanted to talk to you today about this very difficult ACT sequence question. It's number 51. And let's start by just reading the question. The, or a teacher assigns each of her 18 students a different integer from 1 through 18. The teacher forms pairs of study partners by using the rule that the sum of the pairs of the numbers is a perfect square. Assuming the nine pairs of students follow this rule, the student assigned which number must be paired with the student assigned number one? Okay, very difficult question. Um, I've seen people waste a lot of time on this. In fact, at times, I myself have wasted some time on this question. So let's talk about solutions. Um, let's first just cross off numbers that can't be paired with one. 16 plus 1 is 17. That's not a perfect square. Um, 9 plus 1 is not a perfect square. That's 10. Um, the other three are possible. 15 plus 1 is 16. 8 plus 1 is 9. 3 plus 1 is 4. So to be clear, our total list of perfect squares that we can work with here is 4, 9, 16, and 25. The next perfect square is 36, but uh, we can't reach 36 because the largest sum we could use 18 and 17 adds up to 35. So 36 is not on the table. We have four options. Now, the extreme ends of a sequence are the most important for determining a pattern. So you might start with the extreme ends, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Let's start there. The reason the extreme ends are useful in this case is that of course, 18 must be paired with 7 in order to get 25. There's no other perfect square that 18 can reach since we've decided we can't reach 36, so we must be going for 25. Okay, well, likewise with 17, must be paired with 8 for the same reason. 16 must be paired with 9 for the same reason. And now all three of those are out. We run into some trouble when we get to 15 because... You would say, well, 10, but also 1. Those are options. Okay. And then 14, maybe that's a fluke. Well, 14, you could use 11, but you could also use 2. Okay. So this end of the sequence, its helpfulness is done to me. I've got six numbers out of the way. That's nice. Um, maybe we should start at the other end here. And so maybe I'll start with 1, which we know there's multiple options for 1. Okay, so that's not very helpful. But what about 2? Well, 2 is interesting. We can't pair it with itself because we have to have dis different integers. So it can't be 2 plus 2. Okay, well, how about to reach 9? We could do 2 plus 7. But our 7 is already taken. Okay, so we can't get to 9. What about 16? That would be 2 plus 14. Okay, and what about 25? Well, that would be 2 plus 23, and 23 is not in our set. So we've crossed off yet another option here. And actually, if we kind of, we cross this off, now 3 is going to have all sorts of options, but that 2 and 14 tells us something. Okay, 2 and 14, that works together. What if we followed that pattern for a second? Be 3 plus, of course we could use a different number here, 3 plus 12, but what if we use 13 and uh, 3? We could use 13 and 12, but the pattern emerged to that. Maybe it's 13 and 3. 12, of course, could be used with 13, but perhaps with 4. Let's just see if this works out. Um, 11 and 5, and 10 and 6. I've left these gaps because, of course, you could pair 11 as we saw before. Well, actually, to be clear, I was going to say we could pair 11 with 14 following the second sequence, but we've already considered that 2 and 14 must go together. 2 must go with 14, so 14 has no other options. Okay, so now this pattern feels that much better. Um, and of course, 10 could be paired with 15 to get to 25 or with 6. But these couple of hints, really the 2 and the 14, let us know that what the pattern has to be. Now we've covered all our numbers. We have 1 through 6 here, 7, 8, 9, above, 10 through 18, all covered here. 
Now, I mean, you may say, well, what again is the answer? Have we arrived at the answer yet? Well, we have up here our options where 15 could go with 10 or with 1. Um, and then down here where 10 could go with 15 or 6. But if we follow our pattern, said 10 goes with 6. Okay, so let's cross off these middle terms to be clear. In our sequence, 10 goes with 6. 15 must go, therefore, with 1. It's kind of interesting to notice that what occurred in each set is that we were reaching for the actually the largest possible perfect square ended up being the sequence we were going with but that's probably not important what's important is to look at the beginning and end of sequences 18 through 16 told us quite a bit while one didn't tell us what we wanted to know 2 and 14 was just enough extra information to let us know what the pattern is the number that must be paired with 1 is 15. Now the last thing I want to say about this question is, of course, that takes about two and a half minutes. Maybe two minutes if you're really moving, but even if you know what you're doing, it takes a little bit of time. If you're the kind of student that only has five minutes left for the last ten questions, I don't think you should go through this process. I think what you should do is say, well, I've crossed off two answers, and then consider our remaining answers. Three could go with, if we had no data other than just the answer choices. Three could go with one, three could go with six, three could go with 13. Okay, well that's quite a lot of options. Whereas eight could only go with one, it can't go with itself to reach 16, but it could go, of course, we saw with 17. Okay, that's only two options. Most likely then D is a better answer than, than E. And 15 could go with one, or 15 could go with 10. So at that point, you have 50-50 odds between answer choices B and D, just in terms of the likelihood that uh, having less options means that B or D is more likely the correct answer. So you had 50-50 odds. That's worth it to just get 50-50 odds in 20 seconds and move on, as opposed to working your butt off just to make sure that you got that point. So I hope that helps. Um, the name of the game with sequences, one last time I'll say it, is the extreme ends of the sequence tell you the most. Um, if you have any questions about this, or if you have another way that you think you'd like to do this question, we'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, HigherLearningTestPrep.com. And until next time, take care and happy studying.